Welcome to Electra Online. If you watched the previous video, you would have seen that I came up with a problem where we had two blocks colliding. We said that they had lost part of their energy because it was an inelastic collision. They didn't stick together, which meant that they had independent final velocities, which we're trying to find. But it turned out the numbers that I chose, we could not find a correct answer. It was an impossible answer. In other words, there was no possible way in which we could come up with find the velocities that would both meet the conservation momentum requirements and the energy loss requirements that I put in. I had said that in the collision we lost half the original energy. So we're going to do the equation again, but in this, kind, in this case we're only going to lose 5% of the energy law, uh, 5% of the original energy would be lost in the collision. Let's see if we get a valid answer this time. See, the reason why we want to do the problem like this is whenever they give you a, a conservation momentum problem where the collision is inelastic and they don't stick together, that means they both have an independent velocity that you try and find, by using conservation momentum alone by itself, you cannot solve the problem because you end up with two unknowns in only one equation. Can't solve for V1 and V2 simultaneously. But if they also tell you that part of the energy is lost, in this case, let's say that 5% of the energy is lost in the collision, we should be able to solve this problem because then we can come up with a second equation that relates V1 and V2 together. So what I said was that E final, since I lost 5% of the energy, E final therefore is only 95% of the original energy. We lost 5%, which means that the kinetic energy of the first object plus the kinetic energy of the second object after the collision is equal to 95% or 0.95 the kinetic energy initially of the two objects like that. Right away you can see you can get rid of the one halves, which means that we now have 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared equals to 95% of this, and of course we know their velocities and their masses, so we come up with that value. So let's get a calculator together. So this is 400 plus 50, that's 450 times 0.95, and that becomes 427 and a half, so 427.5. So now we have two equations, a linear equation from the conservation momentum that relates V1 final and V2 final, and now we have a second equation, which is the quadratic equation, using the energy relationship where we relate V1 final to V2 final. Now, to solve that problem, what we have to do is solve this equation for one of the two unknowns and now substitute that into the second equation. So what I did was I solved V2 final in terms of V1 final and then we'll substitute that in here, there. We replace that V2 by what V2 is equal to in terms of V1 and now we have an equation with only one unknown. It'll be a quadratic equation but we know how to solve those. So this becomes 4 V1 final squared plus 2v2, oh, well, we don't want to write v2, we now want to write its replacement, which is right here, so v2 final is equal to this, so 2 times 25 minus 2v1 final quantity squared, so we replace v2 final by this quantity right there, and that is equal to 427.5. Now here we have a binomial that we're squaring, so we go ahead and work that out, so we have 4v1 final squared plus 2 times this number squared, which is 625, twice the product of the 2, so the product of 25 and 2 is 50, times 2 is 100, with the negative sign, so minus 100, v1 final, and then plus 4v1 final squared, and that equals 427.5, now we still have to get rid of these parentheses, multiply everything by 2, see what we get. So we get 4v1 final squared plus 1250 minus 200 v1 final plus 8 v1 final squared equals 427.5. And so finally we're going to combine everything on one side to make it a quadratic equation that we can solve. So we get 12v1 final squared minus 200 v1 final and then we have 1250 minus 427 so minus that plus 1250 is uh, plus 822.5 equals zero so now we have a quadratic equation which if we can solve that will lead us to the two values for v1 final and v2 final so first we solve for v1 final by solving this equation in a quadratic formula so we have v1 final is equal to, remember the quadratic formula, 
it's minus b, b is this term right here, so that would be a plus 200, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 200 squared. We don't have to worry about the negative sign since we're squaring it anyway, minus 4 times a, which is 12, times c, which is 822.5. And the whole thing divided by, let's see here, 2a, which is 24. All right, so v1 final equals, this should give us two possible values for v1, and one of them will seem reasonable, the other one probably not. Let's find out. So this is equal to 200 uh, plus or minus the square root of that. Well, we can just work that out altogether. So we have 822.5 times 48, that's 4 times 12 is 48. That becomes minus, and we add that to 200 squared. Okay, so we have the square root of 520, take the square root of that, we have 22.8, so plus or minus 22.8, all divided by 2a, uh, so 2a would be, let's see here, um, 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 that's uh, 24, all right, so that gives us these two possible answers. If I take plus 22.8, what do I get? So that would be plus 200, divided by 24 equals, I get 9.28, so v1 final is 9.28 meters per second, or if I take the negative answer, so we have 200 minus 22.8, and divide that by 24, I get 7.38 meters per second. Okay, so we have two possible answers for V1 final. That means we have two possible answers for V2 final. Right away when I look at that, I don't really see any particular reason why either one of them can be possible. I have a bigger block with more velocity hitting a smaller block from behind, and I would expect that this block would indeed have gained some speed. Either it will be 7.38 meters per second or 9.28, I can't really tell yet. But let me plug those two values back into this equation to get the corresponding value for V2 final, and that might give us a hint as to which of the two might be possible. All right, so V2 final is equal to 25 minus 2 times, let me use the first answer, 9.28, and let's try that. So, oh, is it 9.28? I got 9.38 on my calculator. Oh, 7.38, sorry. 9.28 is correct. So, we have 25 minus 2 times 9.28 equals, so V2 final will be 6.44 meters per second. All right. If I use the other possible value for V1, so V2 final is equal to 25 minus 2 times, I use 7.38, and see what I get there. So 7.38 times 2, subtract it from 25. Ah, here's the key here, 10.24 meters per second. All right, so if I use the first answer, 9.28, I get this for V2, but if I use the second answer, 7.38, I get this for V2. Now that doesn't seem right. Tell me why it doesn't seem right. It has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second and it collides with this block from behind. You would expect that because of the collision, this block will have been slowed down. You wouldn't expect this block to be sped up because it hits this block from behind. It's not going to be moving faster because of that. So this is not a valid answer, so therefore this value for V1 final is also not a valid answer. It cannot give you a valid answer for V2. So therefore the final conclusion that if 5% of the energy is lost, V1 final will have this final velocity and V2 final will have uh, this final velocity. And those are the two velocities that meet both conditions, that momentum is conserved and 5% of the energy is lost in the collision, which gives you those possible values for V1 final and V2 final. And that's how you do that problem.